My name is Max. I am coming 65 and I'm working as a verger in the cathedral here. I've been ringing the bell for the last 20 years. This will be the last time that I'm going to ring the bells. We have eight bells up on the third level. So those bells are actually fixed, secured permanently. The bells varies in size. Every rope that we pull gives a different tune. The main purpose is to let the public know services, you know, in five minutes' time. I used to work in the yacht club. We do spicing of ropes for our line, for our anchors and so on. We use manila rope and those give way. I apply the same skill, you know, and uh, try to fix it back. Rather than we change a whole line, which can be some 10 meters, what we do is we just join them. St Andrews has always had an association with bells. The first church that was built in 1837 received a bell from Marie Revere Ballester. So every night at 8 o'clock, that bell would be rung for five minutes to remind sailors to get back to their ships and for the residents to stay indoors. The Revere Bell did that job for 30 years and then it was retired. It now sits in the National Museum of Singapore. In 1889, we received this gift of eight bells from the Fraser family. It was given on the 70th anniversary of the founding of Singapore. So these are the bells that we are now talking about. I was informed that the bells are going to be removed and they're going to send to England. Uh, of course, after so many years, you get attached to the, the, the bell and to the sound. So it, it, it's sad. It, it's kind of sad, you know, inside that. But we accept changes and we know that things change and of course it's for the better. And 2019 is the bicentennial of Singapore. And we actually decided that we should do something about the bells. If we went through with this project, it would be the first tower of its kind in Southeast Asia and it would be a splendid contribution to the celebration of the 200th anniversary of Singapore. My name is Andrew Mills. I work for John Taylor's. I'm one of the directors there. I started ringing bells at the age of four, stood on a chair. So that's how I started. My parents were ringers. I was into ringing and if I could have left school at the age of nine, I'd have been a bell hanger from the age of nine. I really would. <laughs> the bells were hung for chiming only. We used to refer to it as like milking a cow when you're doing the others because you just do this sort of motion. You were just pulling the clapper to the bell individually and you would play tunes on there, so there'd be recognisable tunes. Change ringing is a very, very different art. My name is Andrew Reynolds. The project really kicked off in 1973 when my father first visited Singapore and noticed that in 
the tower of St Andrew's Cathedral, there was a magnificent ring of bells supplied by John Taylor in 1888 that was effectively not being used to its, its most potential. The bells could be rehung for change ringing. Instead of having the bell starting in the mouth down position, you start with the bell facing upwards and instead of being hit outside or inside by a hammer, the bell is swinging through 360 degrees to give you a much more full and rich sound out of a bell. Well, St Andrew's Cathedral is over 150 years. It was gazetted a national monument in 1973. It's been a historical part of our civic district. We have to maintain its facade. We have to keep it in good repair. And that was also why we took some precautions as we took the bells down. They wanted an experienced bell hanger, and I've got 38 years of experience in the trade, so I was the chosen number one to come out here and manage the project. I've seen the eight bells on level three. And we've got to try and work a way of getting these bells out of the tower. The only way I can see of doing it was cutting a hole in the floor. We've then got to get the bells out of the window, I mean, through level two. We've actually had to work with a local team to prepare for this. My name is Kevin. I'm the head of estate management for St Andrew's Cathedral. For the belt installation project, I am the project manager. There are four levels to the bell tower. Now the bell sits on the third level and the ringing chamber is on the second level. Now besides cutting a hole in the floor to lower the bells between the third level to the second level, we also need to remove the central column of the windows at the second floor, widening it for the removal of the bells out of the tower. I work for John Taylor & Co and I'm in Singapore as project manager for the installation of the uh, bells at uh, St Andrew's Cathedral. The main issue in moving bells around is always their weight. The lightest is about 200 kilograms and the heaviest bell here is about 1.4 tonnes. Okay, the bells are being suspended in the belfry by its frames. So what we need to do is to dismantle the bells part by part. We started off by dismantling the clappers, followed by the headstock. So bringing the heavy bells from a floor 12 metres above through an open hole obviously gives you some safety issues. But also you've got the sheer effort of trying to make sure that as each bell comes down, it's got to be moved to another place in the floor. The local team upstairs helped me to get the bells into each position, lower each bell in turn, and then Andrew position for removal. After having lowered the bells to level 2, we arranged for a crane to hoist the bells out from the level 2 windows onto a lorry. The biggest bell in particular, Andrew, is a very big bell and it's quite tall. So when we were trying to get the crane into the cathedral to pick it up, it was a real challenge. It managed to catch the cathedral a couple of times on the way out. But um, fortunately it didn't cause any major damage. We got the bells down in good time. Uh, we planned four days to removal and we got, basically, we were ready at the end of day three for removal, so it worked spot on. Seeing the bells leave cathedral, well, there was a tinge of sadness. I grew up with them. 
I am one of the servers in the cathedral and uh, we play the bells regularly during Christmas, Easter. So yes, to see it go, there was a sad moment. The bells will be away for nine months with John Taylor's in the UK. During the nine months, we will then have to remove the old paint, replaster the wall, provide a new scheme code, and repaint. You have noticed now that we have secondary glass windows that's placed over our existing uh, wooden windows. The purpose of these glass windows is to actually keep the aircon in for the ringers itself because it can get pretty hot. Being an old building, there are many unknowns uh, that we will probably encounter and that will cause a delay to the uh, restoration work. One hundred and thirty years ago, these bells were supplied from the factory we're still using to this very day. The first step of any bell founder is to cast the bell. You decide on what shape the bell should be, and then you create a mould in that shape. Fill the mould with molten bronze. And then, hopefully, about a few days later, you can break it out of the mould and there is a bell of exactly the shape that you want. After the bell is cast comes the most important part of all, and the, the part that these bells never went through in 1888, which is the tuning work. So the bell is put on an upright lathe, and the inside of the bell is actually machined out until the bell is of the correct notes. I'm actually here to welcome the bells as the, the bells came into port. Bells can be damaged in transit. Although they look big and strong and heavy and uh, very powerful, and they certainly sound that way, they're actually a very brittle metal. So if you're shipping bells, you've always got to make very sure that they are securely fastened. It's sort of like shipping a, a 1.5 tonne piece of glass. We can't repair bells. The only thing you can do with them is to break them up and start again. I was informed that the bells are coming back and I was really excited because uh, I heard that, you know, from eight bells, they're going to come back with 13 bells. So uh, that is something very, very interesting. And you know, the way of the ringing of the bells will be different from what we did uh, for the past years. It'll be interesting. How do I feel about the bells coming back? Excited and yet with apprehension. At the foundry, six of the original bells were cleaned up and retuned. Two were melted down and recast. Five new bells were added giving us 13 bells in total. This was possible with the generous donations from our cathedral members. Change ringing is done with 5, 6, 8, 10 or 12 bells. As we are a new band, we have no training in this form of ringing, so we will not be able to ring the three largest bells for a while. With a 13th bell, we are able to ring rounds of 6 and 8 using the lighter bells, until such time when we can handle the heavier bells. We need to tell the driver to come in that way so that we can unload entirely within. Excellent. Okay, thanks. Bye. 
Just uh, please no parking in the cones. Sure. Thank you. And we're just making sure that uh, nobody parks in the area where they're coned off. Just don't park in the coned off area, please. Yeah. A, a 40, foot, uh, 40 foot trailer is coming in. The bells were transported back to the cathedral in a 40 foot trailer. As you know, the service roads in cathedral are very narrow and uh, the angles are very tight. Is getting out going to be possible? We'll need that covered back over. The 12 bell ring is traditionally that associated with a great cathedral. The, the ring in St Paul's in London, it's uh, St Andrew's Cathedral in Sydney, St Paul's Cathedral in Melbourne, they're all large cathedral sized 12 bell installations. This will be the only active ring of change ringing bells in Asia. This is a weird new bell. Yeah. This is a new bell. This is the uh, flat sixth. Yes, yes. The bells arrive early and the belfry itself is not ready. We had to erect a tent to keep the bells in for a period of about three weeks. Forward. Oh, over two. Okay. Part of the challenge when working in Singapore, obviously, is that it is a, uh, a diverse melting pot of peoples and languages. Yeah. Well, then also then trying push. to work out how to make sure that the jargon-filled language that uh, bell ringers and bell hangers tend to use is something that can be understood by people who've never worked with bells before. Fortunately, Kevin and the others at the cathedral were fast learners and were able to assist us greatly. Okay, we're finished for the day. Um, all the bells are safely tucked up in bed in their tents. The wheels are away and that large container with everything else in it is also safely stored. Early next week we've got the frame arriving um, and then in two weeks uh, we put them all together and up the tower as soon as it's ready for us. We are lifting up the secondary I-beams. Primary I-beams have already been installed. The steel frames will then sit on the secondary I-beam to form the individual bell pits. Now each bell will then be lowered into its own pit within the frame. Andrew Mills is up there, so he's monitoring the placement of the beam, putting in place and getting the workers to hold it down. So he's taking charge of what's happening at the third level. Number? Is 51? Over there. They will need some time to complete the whole fixture for the secondary beam. So while they are doing that upstairs, we will then continue to lift the bells to the second level. So we had to be very careful swinging the bells into the window and not damaging the frad brake. So we had to lower the bell onto scaffold poles. The Egyptian method beautifully worked for rolling them through the window before they could be then picked up inside.
Because we couldn't get the bells directly into the upper floor, we had to bring them in at the lower level uh, as we had to take them out the same way. Down careful, down slow, down. Yay. Oh, okay. Now we've got the other centre there, we can get it to the centre. Okay. Down! <laughs> okay. It's a massive structure which is taking the whole tower. That structure essentially needs then six to eight bolts per piece, which need to be squared up, tightened and levelled before you actually then incorporate the bells. Once that's all bolted together, you can then safely lift the bells up above the frame, move them across and then lower them into their pits. We'll be putting together the wheels and the, all the associated fittings, drilling holes through the floors for the ropes, um, fixed in position, so it's, it's still two weeks of fiddly work, shall we say. What do you call it? Nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. Always been put on some sheets, nutty gritty. There are many parts involved in chain stringing, and seeing how this has all been done was also an eye-opener for us sense of achievement once the installation was completed. I was happy, I was glad that it was going to be over soon. The bells are fully installed. I think as you look at the bell chamber, it was previously the organ loft. We had heaps of pipes, bellows, huge boxes. No one wanted to go into it. But after we cleared it, it was about 11 tonnes of debris. We found we had that wonderful space. I think no one living today has really seen that space because it was chock-a-block with pipes for about 50 years. Wow, this is really amazing and something new. Thank God, they kept the whole structure and the ropes. There was a lot of publicity, not done by us actually, about the installation of the Peel of Twelve in the Singapore Cathedral. Obviously, this doesn't take place often, so the bell ringing world is quite excited about it. A number of ringers were very helpful in training our new band. We now need a band of people to ring the bells each time. That requires teamwork, fellowship. No longer a solo activity where just one person chimes the bells. for dedication, we ask for your blessing on these bells, fashioned for the service of the church, and keep this praise safe for all who serve you in it. Overall, I was absolutely pleased with what's going on. I'm in tears of joy at what we've achieved here. It's been beautiful and the cathedral's support has been wonderful, so I've thoroughly enjoyed the work we've done.
part of my work involves in maintaining these bells. It would be good if you know, I can visit other bell towers to see the difference, to see how theirs are being installed and well, maybe pick up one or two new items that uh, we can probably fit into our bell tower. Really looking forward to seeing the band here develop into a uh, mature and large ringing society in knowing that the project that my father Lath kicked off all those years ago is finally at fruition and that we can have a truly magnificent sound coming out of St Andrew's Cathedral has been one of the great moments of my life. Now with a peal of 12 bells to call people to the worship of God, we can look forward to really majestic sounds ringing in the city.